Okay, so we are up in my attic now, and if your attic is like the run-of-the-mill attics, there's a lot of exposed wiring. Uh, I happen to have foam insulation, which I really suggest you doing, but that's for another video. Um, and for the first part of this legal disclaimer is even if you think you know what you're doing with electricity, unless you are a licensed and experienced electrician, the best thing to do is to call a licensed and experienced electrician. Um, electricity is certainly nothing to play around with if you don't have a very good understanding of it. You can see that these wires are all over the place. They're coming out of the floor, they're coming out of the wall, they're coming out of the ceiling. Um, some are run to outlets, some are run to switches. Not something you want to expose yourself to. Uh, certainly not worth your baby be growing up without a daddy. Um, my little nine-year-old would hate it if I'm not around. But I do feel like I've got the experience to um, do this. I've done it several times before and I always take the uh, precautions of turning all the power off, of finding the breaker, turning it off, and uh, I'm going to show how I do this. Uh, so do not sue me and do not do electrical work unless you're taking your own liability into your own hands. All that being said, um, what I'm searching for up here is a constantly on 12 gauge wire. Um, the difference is that the white ones are 14 gauge and the yellow ones are 12 gauge, 12 being thicker. If you remember, we used a 12 gauge wire to run down the chimney, so we're going to try and find a 12 gauge to tap into. And lucky for us, there is one sitting right there. So this is where I'm going to try and tap in and um, takes cutting the wire, put it in a box, putting the wire in a box, running the wire into the box, tying it together, putting the box back on. So we're going to get into that type of stuff shortly. I hope that your attic is as neat and tidy as mine. That's a volcano. Okay, so we're back, and um, what I'm showing you guys is this little collection of tools that is going to help me finish this wiring job, or at least uh, get these wires connected up in the attic. This tool is imperative that anybody has that's working on any house. It's a small um, electrical reader, and basically all you do is press this little power button, and it turns on, and then you put it up against a wire. Red means dead, so if it's red, then that means it's a hot wire. Put it up against a wire and it doesn't do anything, that means it's not hot. So this is the wire that's coming out the chimney that's connected at nothing at both ends, and you can see that it's not live. This is the wire that's going into the wall over there and down into my bedroom for an outlet and you can see that it is live. So, don't touch that, right? We're gonna turn the power off, come back, check again, then we're gonna cut it. So, let's uh, do that. Okay, let's try it again. Oh, wait. All right, that only took five trips. Now we know that number 14, you can hear I'm out of breath from going up and down the stairs. Uh, number 14 in my circuit box is this line, which is also the line. Eesh. It's much easier if you do this with a friend. Number 14 is the uh, breaker in my breaker box that controls this wire, as well as the outlets in my bedroom. So in one of these old houses, it's always good to write that down. So I'm gonna go write that down in the breaker box, take a break. Get a glass of water, continue this in a minute. Whew. All right, so this is one of those times that things happen that you don't expect and you just have to deal with one way or another. Um, in trying to get that cord to have enough slack in it to be able to cut it and then twist it back together, I found to be not likely to happen. So one of the more common things with electricity is that there's not enough slack in the wire to be able to cut it and then retie it together, um, which is the case here. So make sure that you check that before you cut anything. So what I'm gonna do is go over here where I see a place that there is enough slack with um, 
this wire here. So I'm gonna cut that. Uh, it should be easier spot too. However, I'm having a rather difficult time getting this wire to be fed under the floor and over to the box where I'm gonna put the box in. So I'm gonna try that again now. Hopefully the next time you see me, that'll be done. Okay, we made it. Um, this piece of wire is now run under this board. What I should have done is put it behind that piece of duct, but it's already under there and that's not gonna hurt anything. And it was a pain, so I'm not gonna do it again. <sighs> All right, now what we're gonna do is um well we're gonna go get our electric meter since we don't have it up here test this uh, wire make sure it's off cut it twist it put it back together turn it back on let's see if that works out okay i'm gonna um try and record this so you can kind of see what i'm doing we're gonna strip this wire down and get it ready to twist this is the dead wire from the fireplace uh, from the electric heater that looks like a fireplace. It's just a simple process of exposing the wires, but there is sort of some nuances to it. Um, there's several tools that are built for this. I like to just use a blade and um, some wire strippers, some pliers with some wire strippers in it. Um, what you want to do is expose, you know, like maybe four inches of the insulated wire. You just take your blade and cut down it like so and then peel it back. Um, a lot of people just leave that there. I like to cut it, you know, get this little thing out of the way. So now, um, as we've talked about pretty extensively, um, this is a 12-3 is what they um, call this. And the reason they call it a 12-3 is because there is three insulated strands. One, two, three. Uh, this is also known as the evil red wire because when it pops up in the middle of a uh, your electric, nobody knows what to do with it. Evil red wire. Um, I might do another video on that somewhere. <laughs> okay, so um, you got these three insulated wires and you've got this one bare wire that is the ground. We are going to be um, twisting together the black, white, and ground and then just capping off this red one. Evil red wire. So that's not a problem. So now that these are exposed, you just take your um, wire cutters and as you can see, there's holes there, right? Those holes, you can't really see in this video, have numbers next to them. Since this is a 12 gauge wire, you simply put the wire in the hole that says 12 on it, like so, squeeze together and pull and it exposes the wire. So we're going to do that for the rest of these wires and then we're gonna to twist together the live wires so that we have power to our new heater. Okay, well, we have uh, now finished, as you can see, twisting these wires together. Uh, the wires are off. I've made sure that they're turned off at the breaker. This is the hot wire that's coming in. This is the wire to the fireplace. This, that you can't see because it's going under here, is the um, other end of this hot. So when these two pieces used to be one. I cut it, fed in this piece here, this piece here, this piece here, and twisted them together. So you can see that the whites, I've already put a wire cap on. The black and the round, I have not. The black is going to be your most important and dangerous uh, set of wires. So you always want to make sure that these are well insulated um, and well twisted together. Twisting together three 12 gauge wires uh, takes a toll on your forearms. You know, it's just one of those things that you have to do and make sure you do well. Uh, sometimes it takes a little practice to, to get it to come out. This is not especially pretty because I'm not a very good electrician, um, but it works. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and snip the tops of these and the tops of these to make a nice little um, point and then put another nice red wire cap on it and then screw this box to this joist closed so that um, there's no exposed wires showing for somebody to trip over. So that is code to um, have every joint that you do like this in a box and covered. So this should um, please any code compliance officer that comes by. We all know how picky those guys can be. Okay, so this has turned out pretty well, I think. 
Um, we have the fan box that is screwed to the joist. We have the hot wire coming from the breaker box here, coming into the box as we showed in the previous video. Um, this was the original one going out, cut that one, spliced it with this one, which is going to our new heater downstairs. Um, this is where I cut the red wire out so it didn't confuse or scare anybody in the future. Evil red wire. And um, now we can go and turn on our breaker and then go test the wire coming into the fireplace to see if it's hot. And if it's not, I'm going to cry a river of a thousand tears. But I think it will be. I hope. Okay, we're back here and we've got this wire that's coming down the fireplace. And um, hopefully it is going to show us now that it is live and hot and ready to accept a outlet. Um, let's see. Oh dear. Oh no. Ah, God. <laughs> All right. Red, you're dead. Except in this case, we are happy. You worried me for a second. Okay. So next step, get an outlet mounted on the end of that wire, plug in our fireplace. Woohoo. Okay, back at it. Appreciate you guys sticking with me. Moral support is really nice to have occasionally. Um, so now uh, we've got this wire here that's sticking out of the chimney. And um, we are going to put an outlet on the end of it so that we can plug in our fireplace heater. So I've got an outlet here and I have a uh, outlet box, just a single gang. I have our power tester, some pliers, some screws and a drill. So I'm gonna thread that wire through the back of this box and then attach it to this outlet. All while making sure that this wire is not live. Let's check that right now. Green, you're good. Let's dig it. All right, so we've got these wires now out. And um, as you can see, there's the black, the white, and the um, bare, which is the ground. And I've snipped off the evil red wire. Evil red wire. You can see I've already stripped the black and white wire. The hot is the black, and I've put a little curve in it. And that is what I'm going to put on this outlet. So uh, the gold side of this outlet is where the hot wire goes, and the silver side of the outlet is where the neutral, or the white, goes. And then this little green screw, the bare, or the ground, goes. So I am going to attach these now with my Phillips head screwdriver. Um, you can see I've threaded the wire through the box. And when we come back, uh, we should be ready to plug this puppy in. And here we are. All right. So I have got now this outlet um, wired with the neutral in the ground on this side. See on the other side, I have the black wire. I can't see it super well, but it's there. And it's going into the bronze screws. I've turned the power back on. Power was off, so let's see if we've got power. Red, you're dead. In this case, we're good. So, now the only thing left to do is turn the puppy on. Well, it beeped. Maybe, um, let's see. Hey, there we go. Beautiful. Now we can bask in the lovely glow of a electric heater that is designed to look like a fireplace. And we can change the dimmer. Oh, I hope. There it goes. And we can turn the heater on. Just like that. So, great job, everybody. Thanks for sticking with me through this. I, uh, at the beginning of these videos, I think I mentioned something about, you know, putting tile. And I think I will do that, but I think I'm going to make that another video because I'm tired and I don't want to do this anymore for a little while. So, I am going to screw this outlet, turn the power off again, and I'm going to screw this outlet into this box. And then I'm just going to leave it hanging in the fireplace there until... I am ready to uh, mount this puppy permanently. So um, I can't tell you how much I appreciate you guys supporting me through this endeavor, this trial of 
Human will, goodness against evil. Evil, red wire. We've succeeded, and we will live to fight another day. Thank you, and good night.